Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready for the event. KTTV TV, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Killed when he charged at the gunman. Investigators say the suspect of Chinese descent targeted the Taiwanese congregation. Also station, this is Josh Kaplan at KTTV. How do you hear me? Taiwan. They're calling this a politically motivated hate crime. I have you loud and clear. Expects prosecutors to file a murder charge with a special circumstance allegation of lying and waiting, which could make him eligible for the death penalty or life in prison. Okay, I'm the executive producer. You will be talking to Michaela Pereira, and she will be joining you in just a minute or so. All right, Mario, thanks so much. President Biden is expected to make another Sounds pitch great. Thank for you. stricter gun control laws this morning. During a visit to Buffalo, in fact, the President and First Lady are already there. They arrived earlier this morning. Uh, he and First Lady Jill Biden visited one of several memorials to the victims of the supermarket mass shooting, which police say was racially motivated. Ten people were killed in Saturday's rampage, all of them black. The first couple will also be meeting with the families of the victims, first responders as well, and law enforcement. The Justice Department is investigating this shooting. Coming to you in just a few seconds. New details this morning on the coastal fire burning in Orange County. That fire is now 90 percent contained. It remains at 200 acres. That fire destroyed 20 homes and damaged 11 others when it started in Laguna Niguel last week. And Congress is holding its first public hearing on UFOs in more than 50 years. The House Intelligence Subcommittee is going to hear from top intelligence and defense officials about unidentified aerial phenomenon. The hearing will focus on sightings that are happening in restricted airspace. Listen to this. A report released last summer looked at 144 cases, but the government could only explain one of them. It's fascinating stuff, Tony, as, as is this. Terribly exciting for us this morning on Good Day LA, linking up with the International Space Station, which is orbiting some 250 miles above the Earth. We're about to talk to one of the astronauts, Jessica Watkins. This is Michaela Pereira. Do you copy? <laughs> I have you loud and clear. Good morning. Good morning to you. I know we have a long delay, but this is such a treasure for us, a culmination for you, a lifelong dream, something you've wanted from a very long time since you were a child. What was it that first fascinated you, Jessica, about space? Yeah, I think I have always had an, an interest in in space and and what's going out, what's going on out there in the unknown. Uh, but I think the first time that I really realized that um, you could explore the the cosmos as a career um, was when I um, was a young child um, at Resnick Elementary School. Um, I think I came home and asked my parents about um, Judy Resnick's story and and who she was, and that was the first time that that I learned what an astronaut was and decided then that I would wanted. To to be one. Talk about the moment when you first blasted off in April. Share that experience of what it was like for you. Yeah, launch was absolutely awesome. Uh, for me, this is my first time flying in space, so my first space launch, um, and it was more than I could have ever imagined. It's just a very visceral experience, all of the sounds and sensations and feelings, um, and just this overwhelming feeling of, of joy and excitement that this moment had really come. And add to that, and I know you're, this is not lost on you, you're very conscious of the history you're making as the first black woman on an extended mission on the ISS. Talk about the significance of that for you, for our community, for little girls watching everywhere. 
Yeah, I think it certainly is a, a milestone for our agency and, and for our country. But uh, for me, it is uh, just an honor to be a small part of the long legacy of black astronauts, black women astronauts that came before me and um, la laid the foundation, paved the path for me, um, as well as a, a tribute to an exciting future um, ahead of us. Um, NASA is uh, moving towards the moon and eventually to Mars with the Artemis missions, and I'm uh, just excited to be a small part of that. Uh, some L.A. boasting rights in your story. We understand you got your doctorate in geology at UCLA, just four miles down the road from where I sit right now. A question for you. Have you done the eight clap in outer space? I haven't yet, but uh, that's a good idea. Go Bruins. We did something special for you today. We talked to our viewers and got them to submit some questions because we knew that you are about letting that next generation of young people know that this is a possibility for them. So this one was submitted by Vanessa Seitz. Her daughter, Raina, wants to know, how does one become an astronaut? Uh, it's a great question, and thank you so much for solic soliciting some questions from our younger viewers. Um, yes, so the, the way to become an astronaut is simply to apply. Uh, so as a young person, um, finding opportunities and uh, ways to pursue, your, pursue what you're passionate about, uh, find something that really gets you out of bed in the morning and continue to do that. And as you continue to put one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, uh, eventually those, those footprints will lead you down down a path towards your dreams. Okay, here's a question from Javier Avila who sent in this question. This is fascinating to me. In pictures, the shuttles look upside down. Is there an up and down in space? So that's a great question. Uh, the answer is is kind of yes. Um, we have kind of established our directions um, within the station, um, as well as in our launch vehicles. We we launched on a SpaceX Dragon, so there are defined directions. However we are able to defy those directions, if you will. We're able to climb on the ceilings like Spider-Man um, in any orientation that we want. Uh, and so that's been one of the coolest parts about uh, being up here is getting to live and work in three dimensions. Here's a question from little Michaela Pereira. I'm kidding, this question's from me. Is it possible to get a good night's rest? aboard the International Space Station? <laughs> It's an important question, but luckily the, the answer is definitely yes. Um, we have sleeping bags in our crew quarters um, that we can kind of curl up into and then just float inside of. There are options to, to strap ourselves down to the wall a little bit if we prefer that, but I enjoy just floating and I have no problem sleeping up here. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Look, you're a fascinating uh, person to begin with. Your history, your doctorate in geology, uh, the fact that you played rugby internationally, but you're also an aquanaut. You were aboard the world's only undersea laboratory, Aquarius, and I want to know how that compares to what you're doing now. Yeah, that was an amazing experience that I'm uh, so lucky and grateful to have had the opportunity to do. Um, and one of the, the interesting facts about that, that NEMO mission, the NASA Extreme Environments Mission Operations, um, was that I had the pleasure of completing that mission with my now crewmate, Samantha Cristoforetti. Uh, so we are super excited about the opportunity to do another mission together, this time um, in space. But um, that was an awesome experience, getting to live and work underwater, about 60 feet under underwater in this um, habitat um, and getting to um, do lots of operations and science inside as well as um, some extravehic extravehicular activities um, outside of the habitat, very similar to what we do up here. It's so 
so fascinating. You, you certainly are a person that is always looking for the next challenge. You referenced Artemis. You know you are one of the Artemis astronauts, the potential of, of being able to fly to the moon, to land on the moon. What excites you about that beyond the obvious? For me, I think one of the most exciting things about uh, NASA going back to the moon um, and going to the moon to stay is uh, for me as a planetary geologist, uh, that is um, my background prior to becoming an astronaut, um, the idea of being able to um, translate what I have studied and looked at from images and, and other orbital data to be able to put that together with actually having on the ground, boots on the ground, field data um, just really excites the nerd in me. Uh, so I'm really excited about all the science that we're going to be able to accomplish by, by going back to the moon um, with the Artemis missions. <laughs> Uh, God bless you with the nerd. I have a nerd inside of me, too. I want to ask you about the, the emotional experience of seeing the world from afar. What has moved you the most about being this far removed from Earth? Yeah, it is, it's been a bit of a whirlwind the past uh, couple of weeks, kind of getting used to that that notion that we really, really is uh, just us up here. Um, but it definitely gives you an appreciation for, um, you know, how how large the Earth is physically, but of course also how small it is in in the more of the emotional sense, and how um, we all have this one shared home, um, even up here on the ISS um, with our um, ourselves, our, our American astronauts, as well as I mentioned Samantha Christopher. Ready is an Italian um, ESA astronaut, as well as our cosmonauts. So even um, up here, we are one one family and in, in, sh in one shared space. And the Earth is much the same. And I think there's a lot to learn about international cooperation, bringing out the best in all of us. Hmm. Amen, sis. Uh, and last but not least, before we leave you, I'm sure you have your day fairly regimented. What is on the schedule for the next 24 hours for you? Yes, yeah, so um, our schedules are, are often packed with lots of science and maintenance activities. Um, very different every day. We get a, a new challenge, a new um, fun thing to take on each day. Um, so today for me, I think after this, um, I have some science. I'm working on a um, project called Vascular Aging um, that is looking into um, how uh, the effects, long-term effects of spaceflight and microgravity on the human body. Um, we also have, uh, we're working on a project called X Roots, which is looking at uh, plant root growth um, and ways that we can um, optimize that, looking to the future in terms of our longer duration further out into the solar system missions. Uh, so we have a lot to, lot to do here with lots of applications for the future, and uh, it's super exciting. Before we let you get back to all those jobs you have on task today, is there anybody you want to say hello to while you're on our air? Maybe they'll get a chance to see it. Uh, send a message home. I will absolutely say hello to everyone in LA. I have lots of lots of friends and family still out there, um, and just super grateful for all of the support and encouragement um, from the LA community. And I uh, just hope to represent you well. You are representing us well, and we can't wait to, to get a chance to talk to you about the whole experience when you're back here on Earth and visiting L.A. or spending time here. Jessica Watkins, astronaut, NASA, NASA mission specialist, it's been a complete joy to spend time with you here on Earth while you're there in, uh, on the, aboard the ISS. You take care, and we'll talk soon, I hope. Thank you so much, Michaela. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. This concludes our event. Thank you to all participants from KTTV-TV. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.